everybody and welcome to the afternoon session of uh, planning development control. It's two o'clock on um, Thursday, the 21st of January 2021. And um, I'm just going to ask Dave Shaw, our um, Senior Democratic Services Officer, to do a roll call of members to check that we're all back from our lunch break. Over to you, Dave. Yes, thank you, Councillor Evans. Um, Councillor Clear. Present. Thank you, Councillor Evans. I'm here. Councillor Gordon Smith. Yes, I am here. Thank you, Councillor Laming. Present. Councillor McLean. Present. Councillor Reid. Present. Thank you, Councillor Raphael. Present. Councillor Rutter. Present. Thank you. And Chair, I will uh, move on to the officers that are present this afternoon. Julie Pinner, yes. Service Lead for the Built Environment. Fiona Sutherland, the Public Law Manager. And the case officers for this afternoon are for item 11, Cold Harbour Close, Marge Ballinger. And for item 12, Church Fields, Sarah Toes. And for item 13, Manor House, Ivan Girdler. I'm David Shaw from Democratic Services and I'm joined this afternoon by Matthew Watson and also Nancy Graham from Democratic Services. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Could I just remind members of the public to turn off their microphones? Dog barking in the background. Anyway, not too sure where that is. Not mine today. Um, so um, if they could turn off their microphones and mobile phones really, or put them on silent. Um, it hasn't been possible today to get the clock on the screen for various technical problems. Um, and so the um, Dave Shaw, the Democratic Services Officer, will remind you when your three minutes is up. Um, and it is possible that members of the committee might like to ask you a few additional um, clarification questions. Um, I'd like to remind members of the public that this meeting is being audio recorded and live streamed from the Council's website. A video recorder recording of the meeting will be uploaded to the Council's YouTube channel shortly after the meeting, where it can be found next to the meeting's details and where the recording will remain. So we will move then to agenda item 11 which is 16 Cold Harbour Close. Uh, the case officer is Marge Ballinger. Before I ask Marge to do her presentation, and only for clarification, I've already declared um, a personal but not prejudicial interest. This is just around the corner from where I live, that's not the interest. But um, one of the neighbours uh, Mr. Farrer, who I see is speaking in objection this afternoon, although I didn't know that at the time, invited Councillor Clear and I to view the possible um, extension from their garden. Um, Councillor Clear and I duly accepted that invitation. We went round separately, wearing our masks, keeping a social distance, and um, Mr. and Mrs. Farrer were not there. They just left the gate unlocked and so we, we went into the back garden and viewed the property. Um, but obviously we didn't discuss it between ourselves, Councillor Clear and I, um, and we saw nobody else. Um, just for clarification. So Marge, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Perhaps I would say this is reference 20 stroke 02156 stroke HOU, 16 Cold Harbour Close, first floor rear extension. And we seem to be having a few technical problems with Marge on our screen. Currently looking like a, a Monty Python. Yeah. 
There you are. So I think we're ready, are we? Okay. Yeah. It's just the driving one, right? Thank you, Chair. Um, so yes, I just wanted to point out with 16 Cold Harbor closed Wickham, we have um, received amended drawings for the east elevation and window details to show the restrictions and obscure glazing of that window. This is the obvious Google Maps of the site. It is just northwest of the village and outside the conservation area, and it falls along the edge of the settlement boundary here in Wickham. Here is a closer up view of the site. The uh, Cold Harbor Close um, I, has a limited number of buildings. I'm sorry, I've, I've, I didn't jot that down. Um, but what's important here is the, the location of the neighboring dwellings near the site, number 15 to the west, number 17 to the east, and number 18. The proposal is um, approximately nine meters from the boundary to number 15 and approximately 4.4 meters to the eastern boundary. And these are two photos of the existing elevation, both front and rear. I just wanted to point out that the rear elevation, the ground level slope as you go away from the dwelling, and there's a, a lower terraced area and I'm standing back in the garden looking down toward the dwelling. So just to show that the ground level changes. And this is the rear elevation of the existing and the proposed. Um, the, the proposal is to be built over an existing rear extension and the rear facing windows are to be clear glass and to match the existing windows. Materials will match the existing dwelling with uh, brick to lower and hanging tile to the, the upper floors. The roof line will be hipped and clipped. And this demonstrates the east elevation showing the existing ground floor extension and the proposed. The proposed will be similar east height as the uh, existing part of the building at five meters and the overall roof will pitch to a ridge height of eight meters. These are the two side facing windows that have been altered to be obscure glazed and top openly opening only. And this is the west elevation view. Uh, again, the, the same dimensions apply, five meters at eaves, eight meters at ridge. The roof will be hipped and clipped and this window will be clear glazing. And you'll see more on that with photos that I supply. Here are the existing first, uh, first floor plans uh, and with the proposed. The, the proposal will be a study off an existing bedroom suite with the same dimensions, uh, 6.2 meters by 6.2 meters. Uh, additional site visits were held just to um, assess the impact from neighboring dwellings. Uh, this is, these are photos taken from the one on the left is from the rear lounge of number 17 to the east. And this, the, I don't have a photo of the rear elevation, but there's a patio that extends the full width of the uh, number 17 dwelling and I'm standing in approximately this corner looking out toward the proposed site where the build is. You can see there's an existing tree line um, toward the back with the ground level changes. And these are further photos from the back, the rear garden of number 17. This is taken from approximately this corner out toward the existing dwelling and the roadside. And this photo was taken, taken from closer to the building site looking toward the road. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else I need to point out here. No, just that's just the view of the existing site. I 
I also went to the rear garden of number 18 to take a few photos. Um, this is taken from the back patio uh, closest to what I would consider uh, to the proposal site. Uh, the extension will be above, the ground floor extension is approximately here where my arrow is, and the first floor extension will be above it, but not quite to ridge height. The photo on the right was taken from the first floor of number 16, looking back out to number 18. And here, just wanted to point out that the first floor extension below, so obviously this isn't the, the true representation of the view, but it does demonstrate some of the screening that's to the property. And this is the view from the rear patio of number 16 back toward number 15. The, the position of the dwellings are staggered and there's no side facing windows to number 15. Uh, when I was there for the pre-app visit in July, there, there was a lot of screening. So on my January visit, I wanted to make sure to capture the, the true impact versus from a previous impact just to show the amount of screening. These are two views from the public area. This is um, more of a Western view through the rear garden of the property uh, where the proposal would not be seen. And the photo on the right is more of a uh, further back position um, beyond this intersection that will look through to the, the, the um, tree line in the rear, but the proposal expected to be set back from the side elevation and follow the, the path of the existing roof. So there might be some slight visibility in this area. And to conclude, uh, the proposal does not have a significant or detrimental impact on the character and appearance of the area or residential amenities and therefore is in accordance with policies of the development plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marge. Um, now we move towards the public speakers. Um, we have three public speakers this afternoon um, and the, we have two objectors, John Farrow and Andrew Hudson. Good afternoon, Mr. Farrow, and good afternoon, Mr. Hudson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, John Farrow. Yes, I can't see you, but no doubt. Ah, oh, would you like? Yes, great. And then that's Mr. Farrow, is it? And then Mr. Oh. Hudson, are you here? Great, yes. So you will share the three minutes set aside for the objectors. I don't mind who goes first or who goes second and nor how much time each of you um, use, but you have to share the three minutes. And uh, after the three minutes, I'm very sorry, I will have to stop you. Um, so the person who goes first needs to keep an eye on the time so that the other person perhaps gets a, a fair crack of the whip. <laughs> so who's going to start? Um, John Farrow will start if you don't mind. Yes, um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak for about um, two and a half minutes and Andrew Hudson wants to um, then finish, if that's all right with you. Yeah, that's up to you entirely, up to you both. Um, OK, I'll start then, so if that's all right. Ready, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, the rear of our house, as you can see from those photos, at number 17 faces southwest towards the side wall of number 16, close to the boundary. Um, the proposal is excessively large and high and will appear from our property that another house has been added to the rear of number 16. It would have an overbearing impact, be dominating and feel intrusive to us. The very high roof ridge is parallel to our boundary, but why is the end half hipped? It not hipped, as the planning officer said, it's half hipped. This makes the ridge unnecessarily longer than it, if it was fully hipped from the gutter line in the same way as the existing house roof. The height could be lowered a little to equal the front gable ridge. 
The 6.2 metres extension is almost two thirds of the length of the original 10 metres side wall of the house. Therefore, the total increased building area facing us, including the roof, will virtually double. Our main bedroom, living room and recreational patio area are directly opposite and face the extension. Our other living rooms and most bedrooms face the same way and our garden is only 20 metres long from the house. And it looks longer than that from your own photos or the planning officer's photos because she's used a wider angle lens. Areas of our garden would have shade where there was previously afternoon sun. And we strongly object to the application and respectfully ask that it is declined. Um, past planning applications in this road were not intrusive or overbearing and there have been no double storey rear extensions. Under representations of the report, the parish council objections included height and bulk of the proposal, but this important comment has been omitted from the committee report. Under impact on neighbour amenities, it states that harmful impacts of overshadowing and overbearing are not expected um, to residential amenities of number 17. This is clearly not the case of the height, bulk and overbearing appearance of the proposal as it stands are real and therefore major concerns for us and others. The planning officer herself even used the word overbearing to us during the site visit to our house and number 18. The application cannot comply with the local planning regulations policy as it does not uh, as it does have an unacceptable adverse impact on adjoining property. So that's all I have to say. Um, perhaps Mr. Hudson can continue, please. Yes, <clears throat> as my neighbour at number 17 has said, we have similar issues with this development. There were no complaints about their ground floor extension because it had no effect on us being mostly below the level of the fence. However, this second story extension level with the roof line presents nearly twice the size. Uh, th three minutes, Chair. Uh, twice the size of our house to our view of our bedrooms, kitchen, uh, dining room. Stop and there, Mr. Hudson. I'm very sorry. All right. Uh, um, if you could both remain, because there could be questions for, for you from the committee. Mr. Hudson, could I, I start? Um, where do you live? The number 18. Uh, number 18. OK, I know where 18 is. Yeah. Oh. Esther, any questions for um, Mr. Hudson or Mr. Farrow? Uh, we have Councillor McLean, Jenna. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr Hudson, could I just ask you to complete the sentence that you were about to complete there? I'm sure the Chair will allow me to do that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I was just saying um, that it presents nearly twice the size of house to our view from our bedrooms, kitchen, dining room and conservatory. Thank you. Oh, I'm um, sorry, could you just confirm again your house number was? Number 18. Number 18. OK, thank you. I, I have a question, Chair, if I may. Um, I think the applicant would say that that um, there's quite a lot of screening, existing screening, um, that will mitigate the, the the views from your and other neighbours' houses. Do you do you not agree that 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 will, you know, screen that the the new build from your from your view? Who's the question to? To you, Mr. Hudson. Yeah, to me. Um, well. Just looking, looking from our upstairs windows and across, um, you know, it's, it's, we're going to see that all around the edge of the existing tree that's there. So, and, and also for the rest of our garden, um, the windows that are at the end of the house that are clear actually look over our garden because our garden runs along, you know, a long way. So it's really just lack of privacy in our garden that, that's going to be affected by the upstairs windows. I think uh, Councillor McLean has another question, Chair. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Thank you again, Chair, for your um, forbearance. Looking at the picture on 127, view from 18 outside rear patio left, is that a summer house at the bottom of the garden with a tree behind it and another little, is that yours? Yes, that is, yeah. So where the extension's going on the back of that, behind yeah. that, a large tree. Yeah. And also the smaller tree that's to the visually to the right of that. Um, yeah. 
where do you see the the actual extension if you like the end of the roof in relation to the taller of the two trees coming it comes out past it to the right how far it to the left how far do you think it will be um i don't really know because um uh I, it's difficult to see from that picture where it's going to come to but i'd say it's you know a couple of meters beyond it okay thank you very much for that the other thing was was the picture was taken from low down on our patio so obviously from our rooms and upper rooms you're going to see it pretty clearly and be able to look in through the windows okay that, thank you for answering my question thank you Master, any more questions for mr farrow or mr hudson uh, no further questions chair thank you so gentlemen thank you very much indeed for coming thank along you. this afternoon well, obviously you're going to remain in the meeting to hear the debate um but if you could just turn your microphones and your cameras off that would be great thank you Thank you very much. Um, and now um, we have the applicant um, who is Mr. Duffy. Good afternoon, Mr. Duffy. Good I have afternoon. seen you already. Oh, there you are. Um, good. So when you're ready, you have three minutes. I'll be referring to photos <coughs> contained in my response to objections which was published on the planning website. <clears throat> the proposal is for an extension above a ground floor building. It's completely at the rear of our house, not viewable from the road. And the proposal will be for a study of my daughter's bedroom. There were 14 comments on this proposal. The most important one was from the owner of the house closest to the extension namely number 15, who had no objection to the proposal. Of the other 13, only two would ever be able to see it. It is not directly viewable from the road. The objections were canvassed by the owners of number 17 and 18. They had these friends, family, and even their gardener to write in. None of those who objected did object to a similar extension in the close, even though that one is visible from the road and even overlooked one of the objectors' properties with clear windows. The parish council did not object to the other extension, even though it faced the road. With regard to the objections to the owners of number 18, the proposal will be at a considerable distance from their house. It will be subservient to the main house and be partly obscured by mature evergreen trees. Their gardener, a paid employee, is one of the objectives. His job is to maintain those trees. And I refer you to photos taken from our property on page 10, uh, which you've got up there, showing the tree cover and how the extension can be obscured. That picture was actually taken from the uh, top of the roof. With regard to the objections from number 17, the occupants have felled five mature evergreen trees. One was immediately adjacent to the proposed extension. This was felled after the planning application was submitted. And I refer you to photos on pages five, six and seven. <clears throat> the extension would obscure the view of house number 15 from house 17. The photo on page six shows the sh shadow from our house. Thus, the extension is to the west will not have any effect on the available sunlight. The photo on page seven shows the garden of number 17 before the tree was felled. The further two mature evergreen trees were felled at the front of their property. These trees obscured the view of our house and the proposed extension. Chair, that's three minutes. It's ironic to object to the proposal on the grounds of lack of privacy and loss of greenery and then to fell mature evergreen trees at the bike. Thank you. Mr Duffy, thank you. I will have to stop you there. Thank you very much. Um, there will be probably questions for you. and I'd, I'd like to start. You were referring to page numbers and we've got every now and then bits of a document. 
Is that from the planning portal or where, where does this come from? Yes, it's from the planning portal. It was a um, um, my, my response to objectives. And I believe um, the planning officer is actually, well, I can see the photos. She's bringing them up on, on my screen. So um, I don't know whether you can see the same pictures or not. Um, yeah, well, I have I have read the, the planning portal, but you were referring to page numbers and I wasn't too sure um, what pages you were referring to. Um, yeah, okay, it, thank you. It's from the document, which um, I believe you call um, Response to Objections, published on the planning website. OK, yes, you know, I, I have read that. Thank you. Um, so, Vice Chair, are there any questions for... Um, Yes, Chair, I have a question for Mr Duffy, if that's OK. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr Duffy. Um, can I just ask, um, the, the existing screening, I think, is, is quite um, important for, for neighbour amenity. Um, and could you just tell me, some of it looks quite close to the existing extension and therefore close to what will be the, the new um, first story extension. Can you tell me how you're planning to get that protected during the construction of the of the second story? Thank you very much. Uh, it wouldn't be effective. There's enough room um, alongside um, the proposed extension. The scaffolding would only be 1.3, 1.4 metres wide. Um, and so consequently, it would, uh, the, the existing screening would not be affected. There's no ground, there's no ground work to be done. It's, um, it's, it's uh, a simple case of uh, um, building up from the existing roof. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Could I just ask, could these, these photographs keep moving in front of us on the Mr Farrow's photos that I see? And we've just seen one from um, 15, but um, the occupants of number 15 are supporting the application, are they not, Marge? That's correct, yes. Or Mr Duffy? Yes, that's <laughs> You can answer, that's yes. I don't, I don't know why the photos are moving around to things that we're not talking about. I'm sorry, that was my fault. I was trying to get to a position where you were talking about the boundary, so I was moving to a photo that would represent that. And I can confirm that, that number 15 ha has supported this application. Yes, yes. Yeah. Which is the, the nearest house, I believe, is it? Yes, yes. Yep. Looks like it from That's the map. Um, OK, any more questions, Vice Chair? No further questions, Chair, thank you. I think what would be useful, given that you know these photographs have sort of come at us again, we have got photographs in our pack that we could look at. But Marge, is it possible just for you to re-show? Um, thank you, thank you, Mr. Duffy. With I think yeah. um, there's no more questions. But could you just re-show from the objector's point of view? Their, their concerns, the photographs that we had, and we have them in our pack, I know. Do you want to talk us through? So that one I recognise is from 17. <laughs> uh, let's go back to... That is 17 there. Yes. Yeah. And 17, because it doesn't look like it on our map, 17, 17 and 18 are going round the close, so We've got 16 and then it's going round the close towards the main road then. So 17 is the one past the substation. Yes. And 18 we heard from the objector in 18. Which is the next house above. Oh, sorry. lag with this mouse. <laughs> so that is 18 towards 16. Correct. Yes, Chair, this is from the garden of number 18, yeah. uh, looking across the rear of their garden, which forms the side boundary of the application site. Yeah. 
No, I know very well. I'm just trying to um, yeah, thank you. Go for committee. OK, thank you very much. And there were no more questions, I don't think, from Mr Duffy, Vice Chair. And so we, um, Marge, is there anything that you want to pick up on to tell the committee before we go into questions on the report? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I would like to clarify that the photos that I took um, that are in this presentation are from my tablet. So there was no wide angle lens or any sort of alteration. It's just what our normal tablets take pictures of. Okay. And there was also a clarification about um, number 18's, the rear, the existing rear extension. I just wanted to point out that it, it doesn't come to the boundary. It comes just, just inside the boundary. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, well, councillors will go to our report starting on page 112. If we could do um, principle of development and um, design and layout. We have Councillor Reid with a question, Chair. Councillor Reid. Sorry. Um, my question is actually on page 112. Yeah. Uh, it refers to the views from number 17 which is where I was okay. going to bring it up. You want to see those again? Well, I've got it in front of me, Chairman. Um, you may wish to see it because... No, I, I know the... I know you the. know it, right. Well, you'll have noticed that it's, it can't possibly be correct, the arrows. Do you want to clarify that? Well, if you look at the applicant's house, number 15, you can see virtually the whole of the back wall. The arrow's pointing from the corner of number 17. The applicant is 16. 16, 16 yeah. 16 then, sorry. Yeah. It's not the one. Um, That's not the plan, the view. I'm 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 a little confused here, but Marge, do you want to do you understand Councillor Reid's question here? Do you want to refer us to the page in our report? I you... would if it had any um, numbers. It hasn't. Can you... Don't worry, Chairman. No, it has. There are numbers at the top of each page, Mark. Sorry. No, it's important to sort out. So, um, are we looking at page 122? Uh, 125 is printed on a is printed on a black background. That's why. And of course, the ones that I'm looking at haven't got R, oh, hasn't got a page for you. Um, Actually, I think I've just sussed it out. Okay. Yeah. So you're not okay. querying anything. No. I, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, some of these, well, not those, but some of the photographs are a little dark to work out. OK, so any more questions, um, Vice Chair? No further questions, Chair, thank you. Um, so we're still in the middle of our report. Um, could I ask one, though, we're on the impact of, on the character of the area and impact on neighbouring amenities, page 112, 113. Um, Marge, I didn't quite understand the bit about, in the 12th paragraph on page 112, the bit about um, the existing substation, because as far as I could see, the substation didn't obscure anything because it wasn't tall enough. I'm, just, I'm sorry, you want me to clarify my report statement? Yes, on page 112, it said there might be glimpses. That's the first paragraph of impact on the character of the area. And it says there may be glimpses of the proposal viewed through the rear garden of number 17, but would not be obvious due to the existing substation. But the substation is further forward, isn't it? I was referring to if you're standing on the pavement 
in front of the dwelling, looking back from the longer views, yes, there are glimpses that you can view, but when you stand in front of the dwelling and in front of the uh, side garden where you could potentially see, it is obscured by the substation. This is the this substation is the here, isn't it? This, we can see the substation in the right hand photograph. Yes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't obscure views of what's going on behind 16, to my mind. Well, I apologize. I was looking at different aspects of the public realm. So standing near to the where the proposal will be, the substation will obscure it. But it's the further back you stand on the other side of the courtyard, yeah. there might be glimpses. Well, that's the road. That's Cold Harbor Close. But yeah, I was just puzzled by that statement because I couldn't see that. Um, so we're on impact on the character of the area and impact on neighbouring amenities. Any questions, Vice Chair? Sorry, technical issue. Uh, no, no questions, Chair. Thank you. And um, thank you very much for battling through the meeting today because you've got your hand in a sling, haven't you? It's a yes, it, hand operation for you. I've, I've run, out, run out of hands, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, OK, so we're no questions there. So we'll just go through the rest of it. Landscape and trees, highways and parking and any other matters. No, no questions. No further so questions. We're in yeah. debate. Any debate? No debate as yet, Chair. No debate, no. Well, I, I suppose as it's in my ward, I forgot to say something. Um, I, I, I have viewed this um, and I do understand it's always disturbing when people build next to you and um, you, you think it's high, but um, I can't see any material planning reasons to refuse this. Um, we, uh, Councillor Clear and I stood in the garden, we didn't discuss it, so I don't know what Councillor Clear is going, thinks, but um, we stood in the garden of 17 and um, I, uh, 15 is the nearest one and that hasn't objected and uh, 18 is, is further away and I, I do understand that they think they might be overlooked or, or whatever. But there is a substantial tree planting in between them. Um, so I can't see a material planning reason to refuse this. I don't know if anyone else wants to come in on debate. Uh, we have Councillor Gordon Smith and Councillor Clear, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Gordon Smith. Yeah, I, 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 I can't see any real reason to object to it. Um, it's it's quite a long way from uh, the garden of number 18 and 17. Um, my only point is, I, I don't know quite why they they want to have a half hit roof when the, all the other roofs are fully hipped. To me, you want to have a roof that matches the roof on an extension should really tie in with the... Uh, and you can't change it now, I'm afraid. Oh. Well, I know, it just seems a bit a bit of an anomaly, but anyway, I, and I can't see any valid reason to object to it. Councillor uh, Clear, thank you, thank you, Councillor Gordon Smith. Councillor Clear, thank you, Chair. Um, as you commented, we I had a look as well, and I know the road well, having lived in Wickham for many years, and I viewed the site. There are all large houses there, and some have been added to, but I do feel. I cannot find a, a material planning reason to refuse this. There is a lot of screening, which I do feel will obscure the extension quite a lot, actually. So, Chair, I um, no, I think it's fine. I will be voting for it. Thank you. So there being no more debate, we will move. No further debate, debate Chair, no. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Ratcher. So this this application has been recommended for approval, subject to the conditions on page 114 and 115, five of them, and informatives on page 115 and 116. So
So I will pass um, the over to Dave, who will take the committee through whether they um, approve this application for to be permitted. Dave, over to you. Yes, thank you again, Chair. Councillor Clear. Four. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Gordon Smith. Four. Councillor Laming. Four. Councillor McLean. Four. Councillor Reid. Four. Councillor Raphael. Four. And Councillor Rutter. Four. All eight members in favour, Chair. Thank you. So that application um, has been recommended for approval for permission. So um, we then move on um, when the officers are ready to the next item, which is item 12. Do we need a moment to get the presentation on screen? Thank you, Marge, for your um, presentations. And we have um, public speakers, ward councillor, one of the ward councillors, Councillor Sue Cook. Yes, I can see she's here. And a supporter, Rob Powter. Mr. Powter here. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Mr. Powter, if you could just turn your microphone and your video off, um, because we have a presentation from the officer, first of all. Thank you very much. It just reduces the disturbance that we all listen to. And the case officer is Sarah Toes. We're just getting ready, Chair. One moment, please. Thank yes, you. Okay. Yes, it takes a while to take one presentation down and put another presentation up just to explain the, the gap in transmission to those listening. So we'll wait a few moments. And we can see on our update sheet the, there has been an, uh, um, an appeal decision on this site and um, I asked Sarah to put it on the update sheet. Um, it was for something completely different to what is being proposed now, but I thought the committee would be interested in the inspector's comments. So this application is 28 Church Fields, Twyford, and it's in the National Park, SDNP slash 20 slash 01416 slash four. And we received amended plans on the 9th of November last year. And I can see Sarah. So are we ready, Sarah? Good afternoon. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. Over to you when you're ready. Okay, thank you, Chair. So the application site is located within the village of Twyford in the South Downs National Park and it lies on a road called Church Fields, which is located to the northwest of the main crossroads in the village, which is here. Church Fields runs north from Finch's Lane in a crescent shape up to an oval at the eastern end. So the application site is located on the inside curve of the crescent to the south side of the road, which is indicated by the arrow. There is a fields lie to the west of the site and opposite there's a footpath known as church path, which leads to the church and the school that lie to the northeast and the ground levels generally slope down from the north to the south. So the application site itself comprises a semi-detached two-storey property with an internal floor area of approximately 88 square metres and a single detached garage and an outbuilding. A small section of the garden of number 29 to the south is also included within the site to facilitate a widened access. And the rear garden is enclosed by fencing and there are several trees in the garden to the south of the property. So this is the aerial photograph of the site, which you can see by the white arrow. So here's number 28 and the adjoining property number 27. 
and then to the south is number 29 church fields and with the adjoining property five the crescent so this map has been taken from the draft Twyford neighborhood plan which shows that the application site is located within the proposed settlement boundary of the village you can see by this black arrow it's just on the edge so the application seeks to demolish 28 church fields, separating it from the adjoining property number 27 and to construct a detached two storey replacement dwelling. So the, the proposal has been amended throughout the course of the application as a result of officer concerns about the scale and appearance of the original scheme. So I've included the original and the amended plans so members can clearly see the changes. So the original dwelling had an angled plan form, as you can see here, um, with a single detached garage to the side. This was considered overdevelopment of the site because the built form was spanning um, pretty much the entire width of the plot. So it's been amended to a simple linear form now to be more reflective of the adjoining property and others to the east. And the width of the building has been reduced by 1.2 metres and the garage has been removed from the scheme. So this shows the site layout plan in more detail. The access is going to be widened to allow the two off-road parking spaces. And a new side access is proposed for number 27 in between the two buildings. There's bin storage in the rear garden and a shed for cycle storage. Um, it's proposed to remove the existing trees from within the site and plant replacement trees. So these are the floor plans of the original scheme, which showed, which was originally a four bedroom property of approximately 181 square metres split over three levels with rooms in the loft space in the roof. So it's been changed to a three bedroom property, which is now 130 square metres split over two levels with the second room and floor in the loft space, the roof space omitted from the scheme. These are the proposed front and side elevations. So the top ones are the, the top two of the original plans and the bottom is how it's been amended. So the front elevation is facing onto um, church fields. The original design, as you can see, has had roof lights and it had glazing in the top of the gable, the front and side gable and a front balcony. So these elements have all been removed in the amended design and windows have also been reduced in size and number. And the materials that they're proposing are clay roof tiles and then brick and timber cladding for the walls with aluminium doors and windows. This is the side elevation, which will be, this will be mostly obscured by the adjoining property number 27. And then this is the rear elevation, which would be facing towards the south to um, the neighbouring property number five, the Crescent, mostly. So again, the roof lights have been removed and the first floor windows have been reduced in number. And as I mentioned earlier, the width of the property has been reduced by 1.2 metres. And this is the proposed street scene. So what you would see from Churchfields. You can see the original scheme was in line with the um, number 27. So they've, they've lowered the roof height slightly to sit below that of the adjacent property. And they've removed the, exist, the, the garage and by pulling it in a bit as well, it just gives more space between the development and the neighboring properties. And the gap between, as you can see here, the gap between number 27 and 28 has been made wider to allow for a new side access for number 27. And because the proposal invo involves a separation of the pair of semi-detached properties, it's proposed to reinstate the west elevation of number 27 with brickwork. So this plan provides details of that. Okay, moving on to the photographs, this is taken, this is 
the application site, you can see 28 church fields on the left with the outbuilding and detached garage. It's just a close look view. So this is number five, the Crescent behind and the adjoining property is 29 church fields. These large trees that you can see are in neighbouring gardens. Just another closer view. And part of this hedge will have to be removed to allow for the widened access. It's a view of the two pair of semis together. And this is looking up church fields towards the east with the neighbour, the adjoining property to the right. Just another view further up the road. And then this view is taken further down on church fields, kind of looking north. So this is 29 church fields on the right here, and this is the end elevation of number 28. That's just moving slightly closer, as you can see the corner. And this is the garage of the um, number 29 to the right. So this is the application site in here. This is a view between the existing property and the outbuilding. So just looking through to the rear garden, you can see the big tree here is behind in the neighbouring property's garden. And behind these existing trees, this is number five, the Crescent, the neighbouring property that's closest to the site. And these are the trees within the garden that will need to be removed. That's just showing you the boundary, that side. And then looking back west, these are the trees to be removed. And this shows the outbuilding and the rear of number 28. And here's just a rear view of number 28. And the applicant has provided a couple of photographs taken from the rear first floor windows. So on the left, you can see the boundary treatment with the existing trees. And then on the right, you can see number five, the Crescent. Thank you. So to summarise, the application is to approve the scheme subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, we have two public speakers. Um, one of the ward councillors, Councillor Sue Cook, first of all. Good afternoon, Councillor Cook. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Um, when you're ready, you've got five minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, fellow councillors and officers and any members of the general public. Thank you for allowing me to speak at this planning application of 28 Churchfields Twyford. I should like to first of all like to bring to your attention the question that was raised by a fellow councillor in the ward um, with regard to the clarification as to whether the policy SD30 as explained by the technical advice note back as explained in July 2020 is applicable to the demolition of a three bedroom house in Twyford settlement boundary and it's replaced by what was then originally proposed a four bedroom home. Bedrooms defined by the technical advice notes is, am, am I right in saying, certain other rooms such as a study which this application does have in it on its first floor, on its ground floor, if they can accommodate a bed, which it could. Lucy Howard then has replied and the, an email was forwarded to Sarah Toes and Julie Pinnock and I believe that's also been forwarded onto yourselves. The South Downs National Park adopted Twyford's old and never updated the settlement boundary and the Winchester City Plan was erased and therefore we are without a settlement boundary until the neighbourhood plan is adopted, which we've seen this morning on the slide. The existing house that we are discussing is within what an, or an ordinary person would consider to be a built up area of the village. The scale of the proposed development must respond positively to the environment and character of the local environment. If we go back a couple of years ago, uh, there was an application, as we've all been reminded, and thank you, Chair, for allowing the appeals um, notification to be given to all councillors and the committee. I would agree that the roof height has been lowered and some of the bulk of it, but the proposed development is contrary to policy due to its size, is it not? Does it, not, does it fit with the style of Churchfield? It's excessive, it's cramped, and it is quite ostentatious and certainly not fitting with the current Churchfield street scene. Other houses are widely spaced and especially further around the green. It has an unacceptable impact just on, not just on Churchfield residents, but behind in the avenue and residents of the Crescent. It's, it's overdeveloping a small plot. 
excessive density and certainly overcrowding an area which is already busy? Does it not set a precedence where you can own a property, knock it down and build a much larger property and then leave you with no garden? It's not about just because a resident owns a piece of land and they can build what they like. This is not the way forward, but the proposed development will have no garden. And despite the highway report reporting that two of the off-road spaces are then available, I'm constantly being called by residents saying that there's many cars parked there, which we've seen from the photographs. And this is going to only add to it because of the amount of rooms that are proposed here. The applicant now lives in number 30. This used to be a modest three bedroom house with a garden. The applicant gave up the garden to build a second three bedroom house, which we've heard. So this effect, it doesn't just have on church fields, as we've heard, it affects people and five other residents in the Crescent. The applicant then extended 29 and now we have 29 and 30 effectively gardenless. So 28 was purchased and negotiations took place. The elderly gent in 27 initially objected to it and obviously now has supported the application. Following the plans began infilling gardens of 28. The outlook from three sides of this proposed house could obscure of bricks and windows of its neighbours. The western garden of the property overlooks the valley, is currently bathed in an orange beautiful light in the evening, which is reflected on the properties in the Crescent. That would be no more. The proposed development would in its construction of a detached dwelling is irregular on an irregular tapering plot, which we, which we would be positioned uncharacteristically to the surrounding properties. It would have an adverse effect on the character, and as I said already, and the appearance of the area, surely it would conflict with policies of Winchester local plan. The path that is opposite, known as church path, is a path that goes to the church. It's regularly used by the school children. So having a property with more bedrooms and more cars would create a problem, and it's an egress on the public footpath. This development would move 28 church fields out of an affordable property category, which was the original purpose of building this estate. Perhaps they'd like to build a bungalow, maybe two or three bedrooms, but we can't tell them that. In general, from building in the original garden of number six, which also caused controversial, controversial situation, now plans for this proposed development, despite the minor changes that we've heard, put forward, that's five minutes, Chair. Mm. So in short, if the committee hasn't already had a chance to read the inspector's report, then please do so. It's overbearing, it's excessive, it's cramped and it's unaccept unacceptable. And what I would ask of you, committee, please, you've read the report. I would ask you to reject this and please ask them. Nobody's saying you can't build there. But I think that's <laughs> five you. minutes as well over. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'm sorry, but we have to be strict about time. Yes, of course. <laughs> be fair Am to I you. allowed to give an apology from a neighbour? Is that possible? Was that not allowed? An apology. An apology from Dr Catherine Elliott, who lives at number five, the Crescent. She dearly would have loved to have spoken today. Oh, OK. Right. She was not able to because she okay. is a doctor and her husband is an anaesthetist and they've both been on okay. night duty. So they apologise. But thank, thank you for you. allowing me to do that, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your contribution, Councillor Cook. If you um, could turn your camera off now as well, that would be great. And then we have one last speaker, the supporter, Rob Powter. We've already said good afternoon to each other, Mr Powter. Yes, uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? And you, yes, we can see you and hear you. Good. Uh, when you're ready, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name's Rob Powter and I'm the applicant on over 29 church fields immediately adjacent to this site. My team have been working diligently with the planning officers for over two years and through the earlier refusal and appeal for an additional building for the Redstone site. We've consulted all along the way with pre-apps, etc. Come to come to a workable solution which redress, addresses the requirements uh, for all concerned. I have to say that the planning officers have been extremely helpful and professional throughout the process in our efforts to come up to with a workable solution. The designs you have before you for the, uh, for the demolition and rebuild are in themselves a negotiated solution which has been pared back considerably from the original plans. 
uh, after the uh, officers' uh, 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 discussions, which you've heard about, and I won't go on about that. The current building is obsolete. Uh, current, uh, certainly from a lending uh, uh, ability to raise a mortgage point of view, the deteriorating con reinforced concrete frame construction here is known to have a reasonably short finite life, uh, which cannot easily be inspected for stability. A, pra a, a pragmatic solution is thus required. The option to replace all the external walls in concrete frame is, however, possible uh, and is one solution. This option has been undertaken by others on the site, uh, on, this, on this side of Churchfields Greens, um, which are all the same construction. This involves a substantial rebuild and jacking up of the whole building with all external walls needing to be demolished. This option does not, I believe, need any planning consent. Where this solution has been employed on the estate, the result has been varied in respect of design style, with in all cases thus far a builder's solution being opted for without any architectural style being achieved a result in my view. Somehow, uh, uh, somehow simply replacing the concrete horizontal panelling with brickwork simply does not really aesthetically work. Uh, I guess due to the loss uh, uh, of the strong horizontal emphasis with the concrete panelling, which, which the concrete panel achieves and which uh, uh, replacing with brick, brickwork does, does not with the existing fenestration. The decision to replace, to replace the existing structure has, of course, given us the opportunity to create two detached towers and introduce some architectural styling and for modern standards of efficiency, ins uh, insulation and immediately to be achieved uh, and to assist uh, in the drive towards reducing carbon footprint, etc. The plot size is certainly large enough to, uh, by current standards, to accommodate a larger dwelling than the existing, uh, and it certainly has a, a the same size garden as existing at the moment, which is larger than many of the others on on church fields, in my view. Uh, not in my view, uh, in fact, we believe that the corner is an important gateway into the heart of Churchfield's estate and the building is, as proved, is, we believe, sympathetic to its prominence with lower floor levels in comparison to the existing in order to better accommodate uh, uh, the way the land drops away. Mr. Powter, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Councillor Cook, would you like just to come back a minute? Because I, I'm so sorry, I forgot to ask if there are any questions for you. I'm so sorry. Um, and so were there any questions for Councillor Cook? No. So, an unfortunate error, but... I'm, I'm, I don't I'm, think so, Chair. I think we've got no. two questions for Mr. Powter, but uh, okay. not for... So thank you, Councillor Cook. I'm so sorry to, to keep making you come back and think. Um, Mr. We've got questions for Mr. Powter, Vice Chair. Yes, so, we have Councillor Reid and Councillor McLean. Thank you. Councillor Reid. Thank you, Chairman. I just hope Councillor McLean's is not the 50 questions that he seems to have indicated. Um, Mr. Bouter, the concrete structure of the current building, if you remove half of it, because it currently is semi-detached, will this have any detrimental effect on the remaining side? Um, my architects advise me that this uh, has been done many times before. And whilst we are going to have to come up with a solution um, when we delve into the building, uh, we have, uh, we, we have, uh, we are planning, uh, we're planning, we are going to um, rebuild a, a, a strong structural wall uh, to replace the, the, the end wall which is being removed um, and accommodate uh, and make sure that, that the building is structurally solid. That is, um, that, that is the intention. The exact solution is, is not, uh, we, we can't design an, until we delve into the building further. Thank you. Um, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Councillor Reid, my finger got stuck. It's only the one question. Um, as Mr. Powter, you, you like. sorry? You may ask as many questions as you like. Bless you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Powter. Really You've, you've just explained that the, the building you're planning on doing the work on is effectively, I think you used the word structurally unsound, in that the concrete and metal framework had gone, had gone past its sell by date. But does that not equally apply to the other building that you're planning on retaining? Um, 
I said it was uh, it, it was obsolete from a lending point of view, and and uh, it, you, one must draw on your one's own conclusions whether that means the whole building is obsolete. Um, uh, you can't get a mortgage on these buildings um, because the, uh, the, the, the the metal frame uh, is reinforced and you don't know how, how the, the, the metal bars within the concrete structure, uh, whether they're about to, um, whether they're deteriorating, rusting and they're going to blow the concrete off and reduce stability. Sorry, um, I was in there because I think I'm sure I heard you say that you, the, the, the structure you're planning on developing that had already happened. So I could be wrong, but maybe I could be put right on that. If that's the case, the other one must be the same. I, I, I don't think I said that. Um, uh, I, I said it was. A, 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 I think I said it was obsolete from a uh, from from a lending and mortgage point of view. Okay. Um, but to answer the second part of your question. Um, um, uh, 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 yes, we have we have no uh, we have no influence uh, on the adjacent adjacent property. We will we will make it as uh, as structurally sound as we are able. Uh, I believe, in fact, that the adjacent owner is planning to to do the work which others have have done in uh, in, in in replacing the, con the the concrete with with brickwork, which which will certainly uh, 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 provide a solution to that, but, uh, but, but, but we have no influence whether he does that or not. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Raphael has a question, Chair. Councillor Raphael. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is uh, on the same lines as building. Uh, having just uh, gone through a massive uh, alteration in my house, what uh, steps have you uh, taken to stop the dust in number 17? We've had two months of dust in our house. I tell you what, that's not good. Uh, number seven church, number seventeen Churchfields. Well, you're going to take the wall down. Oh, in number twenty-seven, you mean? Sorry, twenty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, well, number twenty-seven is behind the idea. Um, we have worked with uh, uh, Mr. Button, who is the, the owner there, uh, in devising a plan so that, that so that he gets the building that he wants in the end. And I have no doubt that we'll be able to work with him uh, in reducing uh, the, the, the dust and making his building habitable whilst this work is done. Mm. Uh, I thought that with the builders in my house, it's just not possible. So you've got to uh, double ensure that number 17, that, sorry, 27 doesn't suffer from your extensions. We will do, we will do that. Um, uh, as I say, we have, um, you know, the, the, the owner of 27 is behind the, our ideas and I have no doubt that we're going to be able to make it work. I am an owner of property uh, uh, two doors along the road uh, and uh, I, I, I assure you that we'll be, we'll be going uh, uh, the, the extra mile because I, these are my neighbours with whom I have to live uh, going forward. Thank you, I'm insured with that. Um, Councillor McLean has another question, Chair, is that okay? Councillor McLean. Thank you. Um, just a further question. When you um, are produce the new building and you also replace the wall on the old building, will the foundations be brought up to modern standards on the old building? And obviously the new one will have to be, but the old one, will the, the foundations be brought up to modern standards? Uh, we will be complying with all building regulation uh, and if the building regulations require us to do that then that's what we will do. As I've already said it is the plan at the present moment in time for the adjacent owner to, um, to, to replace his outside walls with brickwork ones which will require foundations. So in all likelihood that that will happen but as in all development situations it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a uh, a, 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 a real a roving brief and, until you you open up or you 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 dig your your your, your up for your foundations to know what you're working with. Okay, Councillor McLean. Thank you. Um, on, on the same vein, because um, I think this is a slightly unusual application for us, and we don't normally get you know, splitting a semi-detached house. Although I know it has been done, and you say you have knowledge of it being done. 
whose responsibility is it then to make good the number 27, the war next to 27, the, the sort of semi-detached war? Our contract with Mr. Button, uh, who owns 27, uh, will be for, for, for us to undertake all, all of those works to rebuild the end wall. We're not undertaking to, uh, to, to build his other outside walls, um, but we will undertake to build, re rebuild the end wall uh, and enter into a contract with him uh, uh, to do that. And, and he wouldn't allow us to take the end wall down um, without us entering into that contract. And, and I understand that the owner of number 27 is perhaps um, considering other proposals, um, but if it just stays as it is, as a sort of, you know, a brick wall or you know, a wall with facing on, you're not going to see too much of it from the photographs. No, because I think there's a metre and a half um, uh, flying officer will be able to confirm, uh, but I believe it's a metre and a half gap. Um, enough to walk down uh, to, for us each, to, for the two properties to have a pathway down. But uh, from any angle, you're not going to be seeing either side wall very much. I can visualise that because I've got a metre between my, myself and my neighbour. So, um, you know, that's enough to bring the bin in and out and whatever. OK, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair, do we have any more questions for... Uh, we have Mr. Councillor Leeming with a question. Councillor Leeming. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's always an unknown quantity when you do this type of work. What happens if you find that next door neighbour's house becomes structurally unsound uh, because you've removed your half of the house as such? Um, are you fully indemnified for that? Uh, um, are we fully indemnified for it? Um, uh, no is the answer. We haven't got a policy in place. Um, um, uh, yeah, I mean, we can look at doing it. It, it, it will, it will, it, it will clearly be our responsibility to make sure that it is cut such really sound. Thank you, Vice Chair. Any more questions for Mr. Powter? He's had quite no, a few. No further <laughs> questions, Chair. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mr. Powter. Thank you. Stay with us, but if you could turn your microphone and your camera off. Um, I could just, could I just warn the committee um, about my potential um, connection in that we've got open reach coming around at four o'clock and I hope they're not going to cut me off. So we've had to have a new hub and then, oh, I can't tell you the problems we've had. So they might come between four and six or they might not turn up a, a, at all, which is also part of the course. And the um, vice chair is primed to take over should that happen. Um, so back to this application. Sarah, anything you want to update the committee on from what you've heard? Only, only just to confirm the distance between the two buildings. So it would be, I think I measured off the plan, it was about 1.3. Um, so that would be enough for the new footpath access to number 27 and for rear access for 28. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll move on to the questions from um, the committee to Sarah. Um, we're starting on page 138. Um, and um, let's just start with the principle of development. Um, so this is outside the village boundary, but only because there was a neighbourhood plan and that is near to completion. Is that correct? And um, then we'll, the South Downs will accept this as being part of the um, part of Twyford that could be built on. Is that, have, I, have I got that right? Yes, that's correct, Chair. Um, it was always within the settlement boundary of Twyford prior to the adoption of the local plan for the South Downs. Um, and now we're just in this period where the neighbourhood plan isn't made yet, but it is proposed in there. So although there's no official boundary set at this moment, then it, it will be when the plan is made. Yeah, so it has been designated to be part of the village boundary in the yeah. South National Park. Yeah, so yeah. moving towards. So any other questions on principle of development? Um, I have a question on the um, the uh, 
appeal inspector's report chair from the previous application is that, um, yeah okay is, is that is that a principle of yeah, yeah. Go ahead. thank you um so on page six of our update sheets um the third paragraph down um the proposed dwelling would as such appear in congress within the street scene and the adverse effect would be amplified by the prominent positioning of the dwelling at the beginning of the sequence around the green um i'm rather of the opinion that that this particularly but but a lot of the rest of the comments in the inspector's report um still apply to this application so i i'd be very grateful if you could just tell us why you think they don't. Thank you. Yes, um, so with the previous application that was for a detached dwelling in the garden, so with number 28 remaining and then the attached dwelling, the detached dwelling next to it, that was of a much more contemporary design to this application. So I think the reason why I think there's, there's two parts to it with the appeal decision. I think one is the fact that it was introducing new built form next to the existing properties, which felt that it was a cramped form of development. So by removed by replacing the dwelling instead of adding an additional one, then we felt that it's not a cramped form of development that we could object to this time. And then with the design, because this has been designed to be a lot more reflective of the existing properties along the east side of Churchfields in that it's linear in form and it's a more simple. It has got the front gable, um, but it's just it was considered acceptable just to add a bit of interest to the building. It wasn't considered harmful. So it was our view that it wouldn't be incongruous. So that's why we felt that it was, you know, that's why I feel that this, the um, appeal decision is different to our current recommendation. Okay, thank you. So shall we widen the questions onto sighting, scale and design? Which is page 138, 139. No questions? No further questions, Chair. So page 140, um, we've got um, landscape character of the South Downs National Park, dark night skies and highways. No further questions, Chair. Then on page 141, we've got trees and ecosystem services and local residential amenity and let's just go on to drainage and sustainable construction. No questions indicated, Chair. So we're into debate. And I will start as no one's rushing in. Um, I, I originally, um, Councillor Rutter, also picked up the bit about design that this is not like the other buildings. It, it's on the cusp, really, as you go around the corner. So the first two buildings, um, as you go into Churchfields, are really modern. And um, we saw one of them, which is owned by the applicant. And then they go into somewhat of a dated um, pairing all the way around the Crescent. And so what this is proposing is to leave one pairing, perhaps, it depends what the owner of 27 wants to do, and then to make 28 look a little bit more present day. Um, and um, I, I think the applicant has made a very good effort to address the inspector's comments. It is much smaller. Um, it's got much less glazing. He's taken the balcony away. So the front and the west have fewer windows. The garage has been taken away and the blank wall was bothering me, but it doesn't bother me quite so much now because really at 1.3, I think Sarah said or whatever, you're not going to see it. You're not going to have a view of that. 
And so um, it's a sort of design which is halfway between the traditional church fields and the so two modern properties as you go in. Um, and I think actually it, it, it will be quite successful. So um, I am going to vote to approve this application. Uh, any further contributions to debate? We have Councillor Laming and then myself and then Councillor Reid, Chair. Councillor Laming. Thank you, Chair. Um, I look at this with some trepidation. Um, I think that it is the first house as you come into that part of the um, area. And I think that the design is such that it will change the environment and the look of the area. I also think that um, we're coming into the area still of overdevelopment on that very small plot. And I don't think all the, the things have been addressed that was in the original uh, rejection of the appeal. So I cannot support this at all. Sorry. Councillor Russia. Thank you, Chair. Um, I started out with that view, Councillor Laming, but actually I've listened to um, the officer's contribution and indeed Mr. Powter's contribution. And um, I, I do feel, I know we have to be especially careful in the South Downs National Park not to change things unduly, but we're replacing a three bedroom semi with a three bedroom detached house. I think I'd be much happier if um, if both houses were being demolished and rebuilt. Um, I do feel quite sorry for the gentleman at 27 um, because he's, he's got a lot of work still to do on his house and um, you know it would be a lot better if I mean, all these concrete faced houses of a particular age and there are quite a few in this close some of which have had their concrete walls replaced and some of which haven't i understand you know that they are impossible to get mortgages on and things which makes them very affordable <laughs> but also might mean that they're about to fall down as well so I, I i do think that it has to be replaced whether this is the right way to do it is debatable. Um, our officers have worked hard to come up with a, a solution which in design terms is much closer to the original and so not not as incongruous as, as the previous application or indeed the previous proposed um, detached house on this site. So uh, whilst I have my doubts and I have my uh, reservations, I will be supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Um, Chair, so we have um, Councillor, where are we? Reed. Councillor Reed, Councillor Clear, Councillor Raphael, and Councillor McLean. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Councillor Reed. Thank you, Chairman. Um, looking at the plans, um, it is basically fractionally larger than the original property that is being removed. Um, I did get concerned when I think it was Councillor Cook indicated the um, reduction in the amenity space. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the case looking at the original plan and now the amended plan because that removal of the garage area has added to the amenity element to it. What did surprise me is the fact that in the report, there were several mentions of traffic issues within the area, um, but they don't appear to have come to this meeting. Um, I too um, am sympathetic with number 27 and hope it all goes well. Um, and I would go along with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Clear. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I feel the applicant has really tried to improve and revise the plans and which is obviously a, a great step and obviously in the right direction. To my mind, it looks much better than the previous application. Uh, so I support this and yes, I will vote with uh, to approve this recommendation, this plan. Thank you. Um, Councillor Raphael. 
Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> this, this I think, will uh, improve the, the site com uh, completely. Uh, it'd be nice to get rid of the concrete strips of those buildings. We've had several in Ossobury that have uh, been bricked up, and this would be good. Uh, so uh, the uh, owner uh, convinced me that he's uh, going to look after number 27 to make sure that is looked after properly. So I shall be supporting him. Thank you. Um, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Chair. I struggled with this one a little bit. There was, there was one comment made um, towards the end of uh, Mr. Powter's presentation. I can't remember who asked the question. It was about liability insurance if further damage was created to the property next door. And I, I don't know, is it reasonable? I don't know if it's planning, but it's probably decent. Is it reasonable to impose a condition that, that a, a, a fair and equitable insurance policy is taken out by the developer to protect the, the house number 27 from damage that may be inflicted during the build, which is a very strange build to me. I know it has to be done, but I'm just a little bit worried about that resident who we've heard nothing from. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, who shall I ask? Shall I uh, ask Fiona, our law expert? or <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yes, I can deal with that. I mean, that, that isn't a planning matter um, and it wouldn't be reasonable to impose condition to require that the the applicant take out insurance on that so it's, I, it's, I do understand that Fiona I'm just worried about the decency of doing things and there's good ways of doing things and bad and yeah, I'd I like to see someone with a house falling down around their ears and, the, and then the developer sadly would say I'm sorry I'm as I said it, it's it's not within the um, remit of the um, okay I understand system. thank you yeah and Mr. Pater did say he wanted to live live there, so you know he has to live with a neighbour, and uh, presumably he doesn't want the neighbour not to be there because the. I think he said he lives in the close. He's not going to live in the developed house. Yes, it's it's understandable, but we have to be guided by um, our law expert here. Um, Vice Chair, do we have any more um, contributions to debate? We're in, aren't we? Yes. No more contributions to debate, Chair. So this um, application has been recommended to be permitted for approval um, subject to conditions page 142 to 149 and the informatives on page 147. I have a feeling they go on longer than that, but the informatives which start on page 147. And I will now pass over to Dave to do the roll call to see how councillors will vote, whether they uh, vote were voting for approval or not. Yes, certainly, Chair. Councillor Clear? Four. Councillor Evans? Four. Councillor Gordon Smith? Four. Councillor Laming? Against. Councillor McLean? Likewise against, sadly. Councillor Reid? Four. Councillor Raphael. Four. And Councillor Rutter. Four. So that's six members, four and two against, Chair. So that application has been approved. Thank you very much. And then we'll just wait for, do, do you want a break or are you happy to go on to the last application? I don't anticipate it taking too long. Let's keep going, Chair. Carry on, Chair. Carry on, Chair. Chair, I shall be leaving you now. OK. Yes. Thank, thank you, you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Raphael. Are you going or are you staying? I think he's going. He's so, going. no, I, sh I shall sit and watch. OK. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mrs Lumby. Hi there, hello, hello, good afternoon everybody. So um, we're going to have a presentation first, I think, from Mr Girdler. And so if you could just turn your camera off and your mic and then we'll come to you um, as, a, as um, a public speaker. Chen, we're just getting Mr Girdler in the room now. We'll just be a moment.
and then, and then you're ready, ready to go. And then you can unmask. Yeah. Now I'm out of your way. I'll just yeah. get the presentation up. Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Girdler. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman. Good afternoon, Councillors. Good afternoon. Now, Mr. Lumby, this, this is a sort of an unusual, it's not a TPO application. It's because the application comes from a councillor, um, Councillor Lumby, and um, the recommendation is no objection is raised to the application for the reasons that set out in paragraph 10. Now, there are a lot of trees. I don't know how you're going to deal with it. You're going to do you need to deal with the trees one by one or? I, I, what I've done, I've done the significant parts to the application, but yeah. I haven't done some sort of shots of the garden. Otherwise, there would be an awful lot of images and photographs in a, in a long time. So yeah. uh, I've done them sort of what the major works are um, and, uh, you know, and I'll explain uh, as we go through the process of what the thinking and, and what, what's behind it. And all these trees need planning permission, do they? It's because they are in the conservation area. Um, yeah. The the the, the um, applicant has to apply to local plan authority yeah. to do the works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, over to you. Okay. So um, yeah, this is a, uh, the site here, um, and uh, if I can just get the mouse working somewhere, wherever it is. Turn on and off underneath, I think. Oh, there it is. It was clicked in. Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, there we go. Now, this this is the back garden. The manor house is up here, um, Apple Tree Cottage. So, there's a line of houses along the road. This is the, the high street of me in Stoke here. Um, so, all the trees are screened from public view by the dwellings. Um, this is a barn, is another dwelling. And over here is the river. And way over here is the A32. So, None of the trees are actually in, you can hardly see any of the trees. The only ones you can see from the road is this group here, where you've got to look down a long track to see them. So there, you know, all the trees, I say, are tucked away um, from public view. So, um, you know, we would better put a tree preservation on them anyway, because there's no low public community to them. Um, and as you know, part of the TPO is they have to have public um, views. So if we go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Now this 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 is uh, the first one, the sort of major tree. As you can see, the low branches on the roof of the building, the barn. So it, they're, they're asking to just take the branches up off the building, so it doesn't damage the building, which is, is good arboriculture practice. And the tree would take that easy anyway, so that's not a problem. The next one, please. This one here is um, is down to fail. Again, you've got the barn over here to the side. Again, you can see the manor house behind there. Uh, you know, say so the road to the other side. Uh, but this has got quite a nasty, uh, what we call occluded fall that snapped away years ago in the reaction wood. So that's in danger of falling apart and will fall this way. It's loaded to go over the barn. So that needs taken down before it falls down. The next one, T3, this apple is destined to uh, be ground, failed to ground levels. You can see it's a poor specimen and it's not worthy of a TPO. Next one. Uh, the, these are um, to the south of the property. So a manor road, uh, manor houses over here, main, the main high streets over here, the A32 is over the side. We're looking south, and these are some apple trees that need the reduction down for two meters to try and bring them back into some sort of shape. They're in a hedge line, there's a hedge as you'll see in a minute along, so they're on the southern boundary of the property. Next one, please. Thank you. This is um, moving down uh, again, the manor houses over this side of the road, A32 over there. Um, the small, they want to build a new. And make a new orchard in this area. So it proposed to take this small birch tree out and replant this area as an orchard. Um, this tree behind is uh, destined for a bit of crown lifting just to take it up so they can walk around the garden. And again, you won't see any of this work from a public point of view. Next one, please. This, these, both of these trees are down to come out. You can see you've got a massive bacterial canker scar here. This, this tree won't get any better, it's just going to fall apart. This is an ash here that's been affected by the ash die back, got a lot of dead wood in it. And again, neither of these trees would um, qualify for um, tree preservation order, A, because of their condition, but because there is no public community to them. 
Um, again, this is a dead tree, dead hawthorn. Um, this is the river behind, and this is the A32 right over here. So, so it's miles away from any sort of um, public community. Next one, please. Thank you. Now, this is standing back to the garden. This is the tree to be felled. Um, you can see uh, Apple Tree Cottage there. Manor House would be over here. The road over there. Uh, so over this side would be the A32. This is your view across the garden. Uh, there's a small apple. There's a betula to come out. There's a tree for crown lifting. So as you can see, it's, it's a fairly enclosed garden. Next one, please. And again, this is looking sort of uh, southwest down. A32 over here. Here's the cherry. Uh, here and the um, uh, ash to come out. Some crown lifting on this one, uh, small amount on that one. Um, so yeah, no, next one, please. Uh, this is up behind the barn. Um, these are two Derrick beaches. Um, this is uh, uh, crown lifted these trees up just to take so the um, owner can use the garden. Um, and I say the barn runs along here. There is a, on, there's another Derrick beach on this side and there is a low branch very close to the roof space of the barn. So that needs sorting out before that does damage to the barn. Next one, please. This is now, this is the track that runs down the back of the barn. This is the barn here. This is the garden. The, 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 the garden floor is over the other side here, over the back here. Um, there's just some low branches need taken off to, to raise the, the, the crown of the trees over the, the the trackway and there's one over the garden of the neighbouring property and he's taken up again it's minor works it's it you can see the stays taken up so you can see from the uh, high street down but again it's minor works it's not going to have any effect on the group itself next one please and th this is back in the back garden over here was the apple trees that produced on the southern side this is a hedge it's got out of cyclic pruning um basically is to um you know bring it back into some sort of um you know prune it's not covered by the conservation area but it is part of the work so it's worth mentioning that you know that it the owner wants to make this you know better again so, and then my, my last sort of slide is to say that raise no objection my recommendation is to raise no objection for it and the reason is that the work is minor works that will not have a detriment impact on the health of the trees or the setting of the conservation area that's purely because of whether you can't see them and that ends my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Um, now, Mrs. Lumby, if you'd like to put your camera and your mic back on. Turn your camera and mic off. Yes. yes. Uh, you're down as a public speaker, but uh, do I understand that you just want to answer questions? Or do you want to say something to us? No, no, no. I think he um, covered that that very well. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So no, really just here just to see if anyone's got any questions or queries about our, our, our plans here. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Yeah. And so did I hear from um, Mr. Girdler that um, you're going to be planting more trees? Um, Yes, the idea is that, um, yeah, to plant um, apple trees um, in there, quite a few apple trees, and then also um, a vegetable, a larger kind of vegetable patch area as well. Yeah. Lovely. Well, you've got some lovely trees in your garden. Um, Vice Chair, any questions for Mrs. Lumby? Uh, none indicated, Chair. Thank you. I think Mr. Girdler's presentation was very comprehensive. Yes, it was, yes. So thank you very much indeed for coming along, Mrs. Lumby. Do stay with us, but if you could just take your microphone and your camera off again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and um, Ivan, uh, I just wanted to um, check under um, T9, which is the um, apple trees, two apple trees. Yes. You have to ask for planning permission to take down ivy, do you? No, you don't need to. No, that, that's um, you can do that without permission. And that's so, the group that's in the hedge line. That's it there. And yes. The reason oh, I see, yes, it's quite invasive, isn't it? But ivy yes. doesn't actually harm trees, or does it? Well, it doesn't harm a tree. What does it? It loads weight to the tree on the top. It's like strangles the tree, and then when the wind blows, it causes it will cause you know a, a heavy um, and the tree will cover because of the weight the wind pushes it. But also, it will eventually smother the tree. Um, yeah. So you know, it, it's 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 good to try and keep it down. But then you've got to be careful with ivy because of things like bats. 
you know so you've got to be you've got to strike a balance of the tree and the, 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 the wildlife and that's the same with that hedge that you showed us isn't it yes yeah. yes yeah. yeah that's right at the end H1. at the end yeah yeah very end yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Yeah, you see, well. see the hedge is completely infested with bramble. Um, you know, the applicant can't really do anything with that other than pull the bramble out and try and prune it to make a sort of, you know, and that will preserve, you know, that will keep the hedge going. It will, you know, stop the bramble from killing the hedge because it'll smother it out. Um, but, it, you know, the leaves get smothered yeah. out. So, um, you know, that, that will preserve it for years to come. But though it's not covered by the TPO, um, TPC application, but I thought I'd put it in there just to, you know, make, you know to sort of make you aware that extra works. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair, any more questions for Ivan? No further questions, Chair. So thank you. So the recommendation, which we have on page 184, oh, actually, you had it on your screen, Ivan, if it's the next yes. one. It's OK. There we are recommendation is that we raise no objection um, because the proposal has just reasonable minor tree works and won't have a detrimental impact on the health of the trees or setting of the conservation area. So um, that's the proposal from Ivan and I suppose the um, you are either for that recommendation or against and I'll ask Dave to take the roll call through the committee. Yes, thank you, Chair. Councillor Clear. Oh, four. I bow to the expert, Ivan. Four. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Gordon Smith. Four. Councillor Laming. Four. Councillor McLean. Four. Councillor Reed. Four. And Councillor Rutter. Four. Uh, so that's all seven members are in favour, Chair. Thank you. Um, so the, that recommendation is approved. Um, and that brings us to the end of um, the committee. Thank you very much.